so the AW rally, uh, everything that, that kind of went into this w- was that it was the big uh, unveiling of every signing that they had for AEW, um, everything that was going on at that point, and just really the fallout from the, the rally. It's, I hate calling it a rally. It's a press conference, okay? Like, yeah, just call it a press conference. Come on, have a little class. Yeah, a rally? It, what it are is we doing? A, it is a rally. Um, I guess rallies do happen in Jacksonville, Florida, but oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, call it a press conference. Let's let's, let's jazz it up a little bit. I mean, as um, jazzed up as you can get in Jacksonville, Florida. Let, let me just run through the information, and we'll give our thoughts, and we'll kind of have a larger discussion about that. Sure. Um, so pretty much the biggest announcements <clears throat> from the actual press conference was that the double or nothing show is, is going to happen on Saturday, May 25th at the MGN, uh, Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And it will also run in conjunction with Starcast two, uh, oh, during that weekend from May 23rd to the 25th. Uh, so, uh, yeah, more, more Starcast. Uh, I wonder how many black people will be invited to that one. Um, mm-hmm. they announced a large amount of talent on, on, uh, on this press conference as well. Including uh, Chris Jericho, Pac, uh, a.k.a. Neville, uh, whatever you want to call him, Joy Janela, Penelope Ford, MJF, uh, Britt Baker. And they also announced a talent exchange with Seema. Uh, he's a Japanese wrestler with uh, well, I think he's Japanese. I think he's Chinese. I'm pretty sure. I'm whatever. I'm probably fucking it up. Sorry. Fact check me. Sorry. Uh, Seema. I just remember Seema from my like ROH, but Seema has a, a group in China called OWE and uh, they're going to be doing a talent exchange with them. Japanese. And- he, he's Japanese. Yes. Okay. I was just. I was. Just, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to miss. Uh, racially miss. You know, miss. Not misgender. Whatever. Um. But this is including the the young bucks, Hangman Page, Brandy Rhodes, uh, the SoCal and Censor guys, and Cody. Uh, as far as their talent so far that's been announced, uh, no Kenny Omega. This show, no, cl- no clear indication that he was going to be, uh, joining that roster. Even though on b- uh, being the elite this week, they're kind of alluding to it. I'm pretty sure he's not going to announce anything until at least February because his, his contract with new Japan is not up until the end of the month. Right. So, uh, the press conference, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure the audience there was excited. Yeah. Um, I, I, I they had a th- crowd. They had a nice crowd. They had a inauguration 2017 crowd. Let's be, <laughs> let's listen, be honest here. Listen, people are going up over the pyro. They're like, listen, yeah, WWE don't got pyro. They don't got WWE this. WWE don't got pyro, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, do y'all forget that WrestleMania happens once a year? And they have like the most pyro ever. <laughs> have we forgotten they have like like 15 years of pyro? Like, what are we talking about here? All of a sudden, they're broke. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like lack of pyro. It's like I don't know about that. WWE don't have that pyro, and I'm just like, all right, okay. But you know, in terms of general thoughts about it, um. AEW is the talk of the town in professional wrestling. I can't, you know, we can't even dispute that. It is the talk of the town. Everyone's just the general mystery and the general, you know, excitement around it. It's a new brand. It's something new. Um, I don't think in professional wrestling we've had really, besides anything that WWE has created, a sort of new legitimate brand of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that in, you know, just saying that, it's something new. A lot of people are interested in it. Um, just my overall thoughts on it. Let's go from talent. Let, let's, well, let's start from the events. Like, how do you, how do you feel about the the reveal that? Well, well, obviously they didn't reveal a TV deal. So I think yes. to me that was a that was a big. Um, I won't say missed opportunity, but it left us asking more questions again. Uh, I, as I think to, they need more stuff to continue the the you know continue the news cycle like the news cycle for them is really really good now to really put it all out on the table and and get out all the information i mean you know we know xfl is coming but we don't we know like three teams like one team like, <laughs> like that like so it's a i think it's more so for the news cycle and they're still hammering out the details but um yeah i mean yeah continue man yeah um what, what, what i i feel that it's I, we always knew there was going to be like another all in type card uh, that was coming. So, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. I, I will say that's a pro that they do have a, you know, something else coming in May relatively soon as well. Um, it's, it's a big weekend. It's like Memorial day weekend in Vegas. That's one of the hottest places to be great location for that, that weekend. Right, yeah. And I mean, my feelings about it, notwithstanding Starcast seem to be a complete success. Um, I do have my issues with it. I am cautiously optimistic to see if they will rectify the issues that I brought up last year. Um, no. If they, no? <laughs> Sorry. You don't think so? 
I really know. Oh, okay. Uh, as far Work as work out great the first time, let's continue it. Like that's really <laughs> how I feel like it's gonna F, go. F the men's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. F the men's. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the talent. How do you how do you feel about the talent here, Mills? Um, you know, it's a it's a variety um, of characters. On one hand, we have uh, we have Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, which is to me is, you know, you just sound so shady. I, you know, you know what it is. It's just like I don't know. Um, <laughs> here we are. I mean, we've seen them. We've seen them around the globe, and here they are at AEW. A real get. Um, the major get for me is Neville. Neville is the guy. Neville to me is if you if you talk about, you know, eventually bringing in a sort of Kenny Omega, to me Pac is the big you know, the big heel on the roster and he's the guy who should like really just like okay, do we want to plot our, our our company around him? And I think he I think he is. I think just from his run, you know, in the WWE, and we know he's talented, and we know he's you know official. I think it I think it's a great get for that. Um, Joey Janela, not mad. Um, of course, Cody and the Bucks. There we are. Um, Hangman Adam Page, but I really think Chris Jericho. Kind of, I, I was looking for, um, and I think it was important with um, just announcing the sort of roster, you really needed a name that was attraction. Y'all are really excited for, y'all are really excited. I'm not for excited for Chris Jericho, but when you think of people who know professional wrestling, even in, I mean, it's not like Hulk Hogan, who's synonymous with everything. And God, God, why did I bring up that man? Yeah, well, we'll get to um, that. <laughs> um, but Chris Jericho is just, people know Chris Jericho. People know Y2J. People are like, oh, Chris Jericho's in this? This is Maybe I'll tune in or something like that. I mean, he, he is a draw in a sense of just outside of WWE. He draws attention. So I, I, don't, um, I don't blame him for getting in. I think it was very important for them to sign a Chris Jericho um, because you just need that attraction. What separates this from ROH? What separates this from any other independent? Or what separates really- it from WWE? Oh, never mind. Oh, I mean, well, it's not going to separate it. I, the conversation of comparing this to WWE to me is foolish because they're not they were, even. In, they were sending so many shots at the E during the, during this press conference. I didn't they, watch that, the press conference. That's they the were problem. literally, they were literally, they were literally, you know, talking about equal pay, which is a, a whole new, you know. What are they running for class president? <laughs> like, what the hell are we doing? Well, that's what they got to do. They they have to they have to say they have to, you know sell themselves as an alternative. And I think that's what excites people and that's fine. But when you say equal pay, you got to be expect, expect, you're expected to explain that. And I don't think they did a really good job of that. I think they actually missed def, define what it was right. on, on stage. And it's like, that's, you don't really know what it means. So don't say it. Like they're saying like Britt Baker is going to make as much as, is she going to make as much as Cody? Yeah. I mean, th- that's kind of what it kind of explains it because it, we know the women in the WWE, at least some of these women are making something on par with the, with a lot of the men and even higher than some of those, especially with the amount of times they work and just the draw that they are. And some uh, of them aren't though, but in the WWE, some of them aren't though. You yeah. Know? yeah, Right. <laughs> and I mean, I, I would like, if we were to name a couple of women on WWE that you think are making more than some men, I'd say Oscar, I'd say Charlotte for sure. Becky for fucking sure. You think Carmella's make as much as them? I don't think so. As, as those, no, 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 I don't think so. You know, so it's like it, it, it. You know, I will say there have been strides, even from what I hear with WWE. There is strides, but this is something that it. You can't say that you're you're upending the pace the pace scale in, in wrestling when it's like nothing in historically has even said that like you could even you know do that like that's unprecedented. Right. How are you going right. to do that with just what with, with just what you're doing when the biggest company in the world can't even do it? Yeah. It's a it's a buzzword. You should not. They should they they shouldn't have led with that. They should have led with talent first. And to me, as far as the talent, to go back to the talent, it's like okay, it's I I pretty much would have guessed all these people were going to sign to AEW. I yeah. pretty much guessed it. Like even with Kenny Omega, like cut the bullshit. And I and, and again, wrestling wrestling journalism has really they've dug themselves a hole. I think this is the death of wrestling journalism as far as a lot of outlets just reporting this. It's like. Once again, my 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 top two go tos: post wrestling, 
uh, Fightful, they did a great job reporting it. Very fair, very balanced, very neutral, not picking a side. Right. Pro- Asking pro- the certain questions, you know, all these other yes. types of things. Pro Wrestling Sheet, wipe my ass with it. Wrestling Observer, wipe my ass with it. And that's just where I'm at. That's, that's just straight like that. That's straight like that, how I feel on 2019. Wipe my ass with it. Because my, my thing is this. You're reporting this Kenny Omega bullshit that he's, you know, I didn't even put it in the run sheet this week that he said he was leaving New Japan, but because it, it's like, yeah, of course you were. You're going to all AEW, obviously. Right. And it's like, they're trying to make it this whole thing where it's like Meltzer's reporting WWE gave him a, a crazy offer. Like, mm-hmm. if he had a... If AEW he had a, tripled it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, it's like hey, it, it, I was like, if the WWE gave him a, a crazy offer, he'd be there right now. Right. Because the, if the bag is that profound, I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, just admit that if when he says it, I'm, I'm pretty much like, no, they didn't. They probably didn't even call this, this dude. I almost slipped. They probably didn't even call him. But it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, the talent's cool. And they're really great guys, but it's like, all these guys are like, to, I said out there, is this 205 Live with women? It's like, there are no like dynamic like characters on this show. Yeah. I mean, besides, to me, besides Chris Jericho, that's really the only one. You're going to lead with him? All right, I'm going to lead. I mean, <laughs> listen. We got a in the in the nineties. It was Hogan rolling around in that damn car with all the ticker tape parade. And in the two thousand nineteen equivalent is definitely Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is a big get. I mean, in two thousand nineteen, for me, I, I, he has he has fooled New Japan fans into thinking that he is like still great. So yeah, this is true. I mean, <laughs> we can talk about Wrestle Kingdom in a in a bit, but yeah, yeah, it's a. Well, you know what? They got, you know, backstage, we got Billy Gunn as a producer. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> you got Brandy Rhodes as as a uh, chief brand officer, which is Stephanie McMahon's uh title on the, Listen, in, in, in the E. Uh interesting. Interesting uh parallel there. Huh? Um yeah, well, mm. Cody yeah. gets to be Cody gets to be Triple H. I'll just say that much. <laughs> I mean, and I think you know what? I think that's really what they're gonna do. I mean, yeah. to me, they take advantage. These Cody Rhodes, Cody is a student of the game. Cody knows exactly how to hit the. Prof- he's been watching professional wrestling since he was a kid, and he's been analyzing it in a different way. And especially being growing up in the business itself, I'm sure that's going to be like obvious parallel, and he's gonna play towards that. And I think a lot of things he's gonna just gonna play towards, um, you know, an alternative for WWE, and we might get that, you know. Where TNA in the beginning was taking a lot of shots at WWE. We probably will get that. Um I don't know. I, I left it feeling I left it feeling generally like this was a mess. Uh they did it low key in kayfabe the whole time. People were literally cutting promos instead of like Britt Baker had uh, to be honest, Britt Baker gave the most sincere um speech on that whole thing. And it really made me feel really great for what they're gonna do for the women. Um, I'm glad Penelope Ford, who also signed with Joy Janela, she's she's gonna be with the promotion. I'm I'm hearing things about, you know, she might have gotten as much as Joey got to sign, which is great if that's true. But to me, I left with way more questions than answers. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the number two. I I left this thinking it's gonna take a long time for it to even get to number two. Well, I think well, I think most companies end up doing that, right? Like, no one's ever going to figure it out in the beginning, even in WWE at some point, and in doing new things, um, haven't always figured it out at the beginning. But I do think it's a process. I'm interested to see the process because while AEW comes with a lot of baggage of just like uh, what is going on here to me just seeing how a new company works for me in 2019 and how they operate is interesting um i don't know if i'm like i don't know if i'm just in like if i'm like personally or emotionally involved within everything that's going on i some some stuff i really just don't care about i mean yeah. I.e. Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, but <laughs> and Scorpio Sky, <laughs> yeah, Scorpio Sky. Like some of those stuff, I just I don't care. But um, I'm interested to see how they sort of move. Also, terms- Joy, Joy Janela is is injured like for all of 2019. Who there is no telling when this guy even comes back. We shall see. Well, listen. And- what do you what do you think? Who do you think? What other names could you see? Uh, there's been a lot of oh, the you know the WWE guys have been you know. Some of them have been eyeing like a, you know, an exit and poor them getting Ty Dillinger to try to. <laughs> I, I think the, the worst thing AEW could do is take a WWE guys. That's the worst thing they could do 
is to intermingle those guys. Um, taking a f- fucking Ty Dillinger is not is not the way. That ain't it. Mm-mm. That's not. And I it think history has shown that's never been it. Yeah, I, I think it's been shown over the last like 20, 30 years that's never been it. Yeah, you, you grab your Jerichos, you grab the legacy guys that have actually kind of been at other places, but you don't and who can successfully reinvent themselves, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, whereas you have Ty Dillinger, you know it's a makeover, you know it's a you know, we're switching the name, you know it's a Gavin Spears coming to AEW, and it just doesn't have the same luster as it does in the WWE, but you're trying to make it work. Not at um, all. Um I I, I mean I'll Obviously, Kenny's coming. Um, I don't even. I don't get the the whole LeBron thing they're doing with him. Like that, I stop it. It's stupid. I mean, he's a top guy. I mean, if he comes, he's a top guy. He's a he's arguably one of the most you know notable professional wrestlers. If you're a professional wrestling fan, like a fan fan in the well, world, well, don't but don't play it. Don't play people for fools. Like we know you're not going to sign. Like that's that's just stupid to me. I, I know, but he's. I, I think Kenny's I think coming. He just can't say. I think he just can't say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can't say. But um, I I think Kenny's coming. I think some luchas or luchadors are coming. I'm not. I'm not as sold on Pentagon and Phoenix as other people are. And if they do sign, I don't think they're signing five year deals. I think they would sign like a one or two year deal there because I do think they eventually end up in WWE. Right. Um, but I, I think those two are are huge possibilities as far as women. Uh, it's a crapshoot as far as wrestlers that are black or, or Asian or something like that. It's a crapshoot. They're, they're literally like pretty much all of them are either going to impact or WWE. So Jacksonville, I mean, Florida. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I can't call it who, who else is coming. I, I think like, again, I will say if AEW I feel something- like we'll get if, if I had to predict, I feel like we're getting a few more older names as well. And I'm yeah. talking about, potentially talking to a, I don't know where he's at right now in his life, potentially talking to a Rob Van Dam, potentially talking to um, a lot of guys who are still working the independence. To me, if I'm, if I'm thinking I'm talking to, you know, a Carlito, I'm talking to all those other Ooh. guys. Ooh. I know, I know. That's all they got out there. What do you want? All the good guys are in the E. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like we, all we got is WWE washed themselves of the, like the 2000s mid aughts, like wrestlers. Like they were I just like, a, yeah, nah, no. Um, maybe the girls from glow. Who knows? Should like, they, should they, should WWE be afraid? Afraid? No. Yeah. Okay. That's all. I want to um, know. afraid? No. Uh, I think, it presents them the opportunity where it's just like, to me, it's like, I feel like they have more like, okay, if we let guys go, we know they're not going to be like starving or yeah. like, they're not going to be like out here hustling for money again. Um, but they also and, looked at, they also looked at their bank account and said, Oh, we good. Oh yeah, of course. Come <laughs> oh, on, we're, we're, we're okay. Good. Yeah. We're okay right now. Like uh, they can do whatever they want, but once again, uh, any AEW conversations, uh, scuttlebutt, we will definitely be uh, talking to or talking about within within the next couple of weeks as they they rise into uh, right into rather their their Vegas shows.